Strange Wills. Starring the distinguished Hollywood actor Warren William and featuring Mary Lansing and Carlton Young with an all-star Hollywood cast. Original music by Del Castillo. Dead men's wills are often strange. We cannot attempt to understand them or try to find the answers. We can but tell the story. This is Warren William bringing you the story, Autograph Girl. But first... Is Warren William as John Francis O'Connell. When a man makes out his last will and testament and meets a very pretty young girl all in the same day, <laughs> watch out. Anything's liable to happen. I remember very well the morning that Peter Brayton, motion picture star and heartthrob of literally millions of girls the world over, came into my office to sign his will. Romance must have been the farthest thing from his mind, because... Yeah. Well, I'm glad that's over with, John. You know, the very thought of signing my last will and testament gives me the shivers. <laughs> oh, nonsense, Peter. Today, people think about such things when they're young and in the prime of life. Well, maybe so. Now, at least, if anything happens, I won't have a mob of greedy relatives hovering around my casket. Of course. <laughs> They'd be wasting their time. <laughs> hey, jo John, I I've got an idea. There's a premiere of my new picture opening tonight over at the Capitol. Yes, I've been reading about it. Mobs of people outside. Giant spotlights plying the sky. On-the-spot broadcasts. <laughs> Big stuff. No, well, it's all part of the business. But, but John, come with me, will you? Hi. What about all those glamorous girls that want to go? Why not one not of them? Not tonight. Not tonight, John. A guy's got to be himself once in a while, and I won't take no for an answer. Well, all right, if that's the way you feel about it. I'll be happy to go. Good. I'll pick you up at your apartment at nine. How's that? I'll be ready. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I see Peter Brayton coming through the crowd. Oh, listen to the girls. I'm going to try very hard to get Mr. Brayton over to our microphone and have him say a few words to you. Uh, Mr. Brayton, Mr. Brayton, will you come over here, please? Yes, yes, here he comes. America's heartthrob number one, Peter Brayton, whose new picture, Two Hearts Overboard, is being premiered here tonight. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Peter Brayton. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Of course, I'm happy to be here, and I honestly think that Two Hearts Overboard is the greatest picture I've ever had the pleasure of appearing in. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Brayton? Mr. Brayton? Yes? Uh, well, hello. Could I please have your autograph? Uh, look, John, look at the beautiful little lady asking for my autograph. I'd consider it a pleasure to give her mine. So would I. I tell you what I'll do, miss. Let's exchange autographs. How about it? Oh, would you, Mr. Brayton? Have you a piece of paper? Uh-huh. Right here. Fine. Yeah, now, uh, turn around. I'll write it on your back. Right. To a... Charming and beautiful girl, Peter Brayton. There you are. Oh, thank you. Thank you so very much. Not at all. Now, where's yours? Uh, wait. Wait just a minute. Uh, what are you... Uh, <laughs> you're tearing your slip. To Peter Brayton with 
Love. Angel Dare. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. I, I want to add one more thing. York 8,000. There. Here it is. My most cherished remembrance, Angel. Say, that's a cute name, too. Angel Dare. The angel who dared. <laughs> <laughs> very next day, this sidewalk romance went into high gear. Yes? Angel? Yes, this is Angel. Oh, Mr. Brayton. I hoped you'd call. Well, I'm glad I didn't then. How about it? How about it? I've been sitting here at the telephone ever since last night, just... Waiting and praying. Well, your prayers are answered. Now, if you'll tell me where you live, I'll pick you up in about an hour. 1158 Rimpaw Boulevard. It's at the corner of Rimpaw and 12th. Good. Have your duds on and we'll step out. Well, it wasn't long after that that Angel and Peter were seen nightly at the exclusive nightclubs frequented by picture people. None of us knew exactly what was going on until late one night. Oh, Peter, dear, you can't imagine how happy I am. You've made a beautiful new world for me. And you have for me, too, Angel. I hate to see our nights come to an end. Just think, in a few minutes, you'll drive me back to my lonely little room. And then I'll go to my even lonelier house. You see, Peter, that's what I mean. What's the use of being together if we have to go home alone and wish? Wish? Yes, that's what I do, Angel. I wish every night that you were with me, not only for a few hours, but always. I want a home, Peter. I want a home and children. That's all that really matters. Yes, yes, you're right. A home and children, something to work for, a, a, an ideal. Well, why can't we? Why can't we? What, Peter, dearest? Why can't we have our home and children just like anyone else can? Oh, Peter, I didn't mean... Now, listen, Angel. Let's take the bull by the horns. And... And? Well, uh, let's drive to the airport. We'll, we'll fly to Las Vegas and get married. Now, tonight. Oh, darling, do you really want... More than anything else in the world. It's high time we caught a little of this happiness before it flies out of our reach. Now, come on. Oh, but, but, Peter... You... But... Uh, Angel, you're crying. Don't, don't you want oh, Peter. this? Peter. Peter, I want you more than anything in the whole world. I love you, Peter. Oh, so very much. <laughs> Hollywood. Dear old Hollywood where the unexpected is always a certainty. After a two weeks honeymoon, the happy young couple came back to Peter's home. Peter called me early the next morning. Hello, John. Uh, sorry you weren't in on the marriage, but it, it came so unexpectedly. Well, congratulations, Peter, to both of you. I'm very glad it happened. Maybe that's what you needed. She's an angel, all right, John, an angel right from heaven. Isn't interested in the theater, movies, no, sir. She just wants a home and a family. Well, you are lucky. But what brings you back so quickly, Peter? A new picture. I'm going over to the studio now to pick up the script. Uh, oh, uh, say, John. Yes? I almost forgot to tell you why I called. I've got to change my will, of course. Well, that's customary. Now make out a new one, will you? Uh, leave everything to my wife, Angel Ann Brayton. Angel Ann Brayton. Okay, I've got it. I'll redraft it, and we'll have it executed next week. That all right? That'll be fine. And say, we'll have you out for dinner one night this week, too. I'll, I'll let you know when. <laughs> you sound like a very domesticated husband. Believe me, John, I am. <laughs> I've got a home. A real home now for the first time in my life. What are you reading, darling? Hmm? 
Oh, uh, it's the new script for my next picture. I just picked it up at the studio. Mm -hmm. What's the name of it going to be? Seven Flights to Glory. It's uh, about a young fellow who gave up a fortune to become an artist, and he went to Paris. Oh, how thrilling. So far, it sounds good. I haven't finished it yet. Uh, Peter? Yes, my love? Do you have to go away on location? I think so, for a few weeks at least. You, uh, you gonna miss me, Angel? Miss you? Oh, Peter, of course. <laughs> I think we're gonna shoot part of the story in Paris. Oh. <laughs> Poor little angel. That's one of the penalties of being married to an actor. Oh, but Peter, I know a way. A way? A way to what? Well, I, I just thought of a way that, well, that would keep us together in spite of the picture. Keep us together? <laughs> hey, what's going on in that pretty little head? Come over here, Peter. Here. Sure. Sit down next to me. Put your arm around me. <laughs> Comfy? Uh, deliciously. Darling, why couldn't we do this? You don't want to be away from me, do you, Peter? Oh, of course not, darling. Well, then, why couldn't you see the producer or, or the director or whoever you see and have him give me a tiny little part in the picture? Hmm? And then we could be together. Couldn't we, darling? What? Well, uh, yes, I suppose we could, but uh, I thought you hated... Oh, I hate picture work. I hate it with all my heart. But I love you, Peter. And your little angel wants to be with you forever and always. Well, I, I suppose I could. Oh, will you, Peter? Peter, dearest. All right. Oh, you've made me so happy. Now we can read the script together, and you can pick out the part you want Angel to play. Of course, it... Can't be a lead. Not yet. Little Angel had her way, all right. She had a minor part in Seven Flights to Glory and got to Paris with Peter. But before the picture was even released, she engaged drama teachers, had her gowns designed by Maurice, and uh, for a girl who hated the theater, <laughs> she was really going Hollywood. Very shortly after their return to the States, I accepted an invitation to dinner. Really, Mr. O'Connor, you have no idea how Paris has broadened me. <laughs> you don't look any broader, Angel. <laughs> you certainly don't. In fact, those Parisian gowns sort of... Well, you know what I mean. I know Peter's new picture will be the finest he's ever done. And while my part was comparatively small, I know now that I belong to the theater. I have a great talent... The director said so, didn't he, Peter? My, yes, maybe he did come to think of it, but, Angel, dear, I, I hate to see you get into this picture business. I don't know, but uh, two actors in the same family, well, it, it's never proved very successful. Why, Peter, how can you talk that way? If you have genius, well, you have genius, that's all there is to it. It isn't what I want anymore. It's what the public wants. Well, Angel... Uh, what's going to be your next picture? Made any plan? No, but Peter's going to take me over to the studio tomorrow. I'm going to take ah. you where? You're going with me to the studio, dear, and talk to the producer. As long as I can act, and I can, you know, there's no reason why I should be idle. I'm ready now for a leading role. And I mean to play it opposite you, Peter. <laughs> Part two of Strange Wills, written by Ken Crepine and directed by Robert Webster Light, will follow in just a moment.
now, back to the Strange Will story, Autograph Girl, starring Warren William as John Francis O'Connell. Sometimes it's difficult for producers to say no to their leading actors, and so it was in the case of Peter Brayton. Against the better judgment of all concerned, the studio gave Angel the second lead in So Deep the Stream, starring Peter Brayton. Angel, the little girl who hated the theater, lost no time in going over her part with her husband. This is what she'd been waiting for. But darling, I don't like the way you're reading your lines. Well, the studio's been paying me for five years to read them this way. But darling, this is different. I'm starring in the picture with you, remember? Can't you read your part down a little so that I could stand out? I got to be noticed, too, you know. But you are noticed, Angel, dear. You have an excellent part. Oh, fiddlesticks. If we did the scene this way, everyone would remember you, not me. Now, here. Here, on page 56. It calls for a close-up of you. What for? Why not a close-up of both of us? And on pages 64, 72, and here on 81, the same way. But, uh... If I'm going to be in this picture, I insist that those shots are close-ups of both of us together. All right, Angel, all right. Let's not argue about it. You see, dear, this is what I was afraid of. That's why I stayed single up to the time you came along. I, I didn't want any conflict between my wife and myself. That's why I married you, dear, because you, you wanted nothing to do with pictures. Oh, let's not go into that anymore, Peter. That's water over the dam. Someone thinks I'm pretty good or I wouldn't have been cast to play opposite you. And, Peter, remember, you're an old-timer in this picture work. Huh? You can't stay popular forever, you know. Why not let me get a few breaks now while you're still able... What are you driving at, Angel? Only this. I think you're jealous of my ability. I think you're afraid to give me a break because I'd steal the picture from you. You... You really believe that, don't you, Angel? I really believe that, Peter. I attended the premiere of So Deep the Stream with Angel and Peter. The theater was filled with an eager throng who had come to see Peter Brayton's latest picture. But we were in for a real surprise. Angel's delivery of lines was so bad, her acting so unreal, that the audience almost booed. The reaction was so overwhelmingly against Angel's performance that Peter and I felt terribly embarrassed for her. But Angel didn't react at all in the way I expected. On the way home in the car... I was never so humiliated. It was pretty bad, wasn't it, darling? Oh, well, just because it wasn't well-received in Hollywood. And do you want to know why it wasn't well-received, John? Oh, I suppose the story was bad, or the direction. No, no, it wasn't the story or the direction. It was Peter's acting. My... Oh. My... I told you, Peter, once before that no matter how great you are, there comes a day of retribution. You've slipped, Peter. You've slipped... Didn't you hear everyone in the theater laughing at you? The next year saw the end of the marriage between Peter and Angel. Peter came to my office to tell me the story. What's the use of trying to go on, John? She'll not recognize the truth, nor give up her career. You don't know how sorry I am to hear this, Peter. It's too bad that a marriage as romantic and different as yours started out to be had to break up. But that's not all, John. The studio told me I was through today. They've canceled my contract. And you can't blame them, I guess, after three flops co-starring Angel and me. Oh, but Peter, you're really a fine actor. That's not the point. They blame me for insisting Angel be signed. Well, anyway, you're not going to starve to death. You've managed to save quite a bit over the years. And that's just it. I'm afraid I'm back to where I started seven years ago. Only now I have a scrapbook, something to remember me by. What are you talking about? I've come to a financial understanding with Angel. Well, of course. But what did she want, Peter? Everything. Everything? Yes, John, everything. <laughs> Three days later, after the divorce became final, Angel married a bit player by the name of Georges Fedorov. He was a great genius, she informed us through the press. 
Georges and she would produce and co-star in their own picture in Technicolor. It was entitled Beyond Beyond. It was to cost three million dollars. You, three million dollars. Well, Peter Brayton was financing a three million dollar opus, whether he knew it or not. Peter auctioned off his furniture and disposed of his estate in the country. He moved into a small apartment in Hollywood. That was all he could do under the circumstances. About a month later, I dropped off at his place to cheer him up. <laughs> he needed it. <laughs> come on, come on, cheer up, Peter. You've, uh, you've never seen a thoroughbred that didn't come through under pressure, and I know you will, too. Got a job in nine months. <laughs> that's going some. Have you made any inquiries about work? I can't afford to, John. If they think I'm hungry, that's all they need to know. Then I would be through. Hmm. Uh, by the way, though, there's hope. Good. I'm expecting a call from my agent. He's dickering with an independent studio. They're considering me for a spot. It's a B picture, but so hmm. what? At least it's getting back on the ladder again. <laughs> how hard it is to climb that ladder, and how easily one slides back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's the picture business, John. You've just got to learn to take it. Oh, excuse me, will you, John? That may be my call. Hello? Oh, hello, Jack. Uh, what have you got? Good. Good. All right, I'll report to wardrobe in the morning. And, and Jack, thanks. Thanks very much. Well, happy days are here again, John. That was Jack Marcus, my agent. Just got me a good spot in the picture. Not the lead, of course, but it's something I can get my teeth into. And, well, that's all I want. <laughs> Meanwhile, Angel's picture, Beyond Beyond, turned out to be one that the critics could get their teeth into, and they lost no time in tearing it to shreds. Summarizing all of the reviews, the critics were unanimous in agreeing that Angel Dare and her co-star husband better take a trip Beyond Beyond before an enraged public caught up with them. Well, after reading what others thought about her $3 million extravaganza, Angel had a little talk with George, a nice little chat, filled with dynamite. See, you fool. Now you can see for yourself what the critics think about you. And to think I spent but my... But, darling, look what they say about you. They're mean, contemptible, the whole lot of them. That's the way critics have of getting even. Ever since I left Peter... Oh, but, Angel, honey, they said that about you before you left Peter. Oh, shut up, George. If only I'd had sense enough to get a real leading man, my talent would... Your talent. <laughs> it was my talent that carried you. I'd hate to imagine what the critics would have said if I hadn't been in the picture and held you up. I made one mistake, George. One big mistake. I think so, too, darling. You should never have left Oshkosh. I should never have left Peter. I wasn't ready. Well, why did you, pet? I would have waited a bit longer. We still could have seen each other. Leaving Peter was my first mistake. The second one was wasting my time with a weakling, a, a ham like you. Oh, you never talked that way before, Angel. You used I to say... I every cent I have in the world on this picture, and it's mortgaged up to the hilt. I'm broke, George, do you understand? Flat broke. Well, you could get your old job back again, sweet meat. You know, the one in the coffee shop. We could live very nicely on your tips. Maybe we could. But we're not going to, George. You're getting out. You're getting out of here tonight. Bag and baggage. Oh, Angel, you wouldn't throw me out in the street. What could I do? Where could I go? I don't care. That's your problem. But I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make Peter Brayton fall in love with me all over again. I'm going to remarry him. You just wait and see. <laughs> Peter Brayton came back the hard way. But he had the fortitude, the talent to do it. All of his friends, and there were many, cheered him on as bit parts became supporting roles, and then, finally, his old studio signed him up again to a long-term contract. Peter completed his first picture under the new contract, a thriller called Margin for Love. And all who saw the studio preview agreed that it was the finest he'd ever done. Peter Brayton was back at the top of the heap where he belonged. The night of the world premiere, Peter and I had a quiet supper before going to the theater. Well, John, it's been a long, hard road, but I made it. I know. 
I watched you every step of the way. I suppose I paid the penalty for falling in love. I wonder what ever happened to Angel. So do I, John. I've never seen her since the day we parted in court. I loved her once. Very, very much. How do you feel about her now, Peter? I don't know. I, I don't know. Someday when I meet her face to face, well... You'll either kiss her or... Yes, I'll either kiss her or... But I won't know, John, until that time comes. Honestly, I won't know. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, I see Peter Brayton coming through the huge crowd out here in front of the Capitol Theater. Oh, just listen to those girls scream. Uh, I'm going to try to get Mr. Brayton over here to the microphone to say a few words. Uh, Mr. Brayton? Mr. Brayton? Can you come over here, please? Oh, yes, here he comes, folks. Peter Brayton, whose new picture, Margin for Love, is being premiered here tonight, right here at the Capitol Theater in Hollywood. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Peter Brayton. Thank you, Bob. Thank you very much. It's great to be here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you all enjoy Margin for Love as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Brayton? Mr. Brayton, would you give me your autograph, please? Angel, you? Yes, Peter. Darling. Of course, of course I'll give you my autograph. Got a piece of paper? Uh Uh-huh. Right here. Excuse me just a moment, John. I have an autograph to sign. Here you are, Angel. Here it is. Roses are red. Violets blue. And all this means... I'm through with you. Why, you... You ingrate! You can't do this to me! You can't do this to me! Can't I? Goodbye, Angel. Warren William will be back in just a moment to tell you the rest of the story of Autograph Girl. But first, a word from your announcer. And here again is Warren William as John Francis (laughs) O'Connell. Well, that about ends my story of a young, beautiful, and ambitious girl. For Angel Dare failed in her scheming little plan to recapture the love of her ex-husband, Peter Brayton. They met face to face, and for a moment I was doubtful. But Angel Dare didn't get a second chance. And Peter Brayton... Well, Peter is now very happily married to a fine girl not in the theater business. She'd have little time for it if she wanted to, what with the little Brayton twin girls to take care of. And so the story ends. Or is it just beginning? For this is Hollywood, and as they say, anything can happen in Hollywood. (laughs) And usually does. Next week I have a story for you about a man who received an inheritance from a lady who died in Paris. But with the inheritance came Babette. Now, Babette was French, cute, and a baby. In fact, some baby. And what she did to the life of a handsome young bachelor is a story well worth hearing. We call this unusual story Penthouse Orphan. This is Warren William inviting you to listen again next week. This is a Telaways feature produced in Hollywood. Any similarity between names used on this show and those of living persons is purely coincidental. <laughs>